Shocking as it may sound, I think Baylor might be good on offense in 2023. Here are the five impact players who will make the difference. This is Locked On Baylor. Confident, oddly confident. I'm usually negative. That's weird. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Locked. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Baylor. Drake Toll from Sports Illustrated-ish, alongside Jackson Posey from the Baylor area. Thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. Um, before we jump into the top five offensive players for Baylor football in 2023, the title of today's show, Jackson is going to Ukraine. Would you, can you Can you expound on that just a tad for us before we jump in? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Uh... The first, you know, travel vacation destination you would think of would not be Ukraine. Uh, they were in a war. Last I heard, they were in a war. They are in a war. Uh, I just checked on this U.S. like travel website, and they said it's uh, level four. Don't go to Ukraine. And okay, okay. here I am. Um, yeah. So a couple couple months ago, I was I was chilling. This was back in uh, the fall, and I was thinking, you know what? What do I what do I do this summer? You know what? I have all of these opportunities in front Alaska. of me. I- Cape Cod, you know. Yeah, sport. absolutely. I'd go be a janitor somewhere. Lots of great <laughs> options. Um, former janitor, by the way, respect. And so I'm praying about it. And I feel like God's like, hey, Jackson, go to Ukraine. Um, and that terrified me. I was like, this is this is the end of Jackson Posey. Uh, but uh, keep working at it. Keep diving in. And I really feel confident that that's where uh, God is leading me. And ultimately... As, as someone who's a Christian, right? I'm like, faith really only counts as faith if you're willing to do things that you wouldn't naturally want to do, right? If all faith is is uh, leading you to go eat at Whataburger one day, it's like, yeah, that's just what I would have done anyway. And so um, started taking steps to uh, get to the point where I could go to Ukraine. And so uh, took a bunch of training courses with Acts of Mercy, which is this first response disaster relief organization, Tried taking Duolingo for Ukrainian, but it's Duolingo. So, you know, what did I really get out of that? I learned how to say borscht. And I learned that there's a letter in Ukrainian that's just the number four. And that's about all I got out of that. So, yeah, good stuff. So, yeah, we're we're planning to head out this Friday. Uh, we'll be working mostly with younger kids and the local church over there. The big, the big thing really is there's not a lot of hope there right now um yeah. especially for the children we're going to a place where there are a lot of um orphaned kids a lot of kids who's are separated from their parents uh, a lot of other situations that are affecting them right now and so whatever we can do to bring them a joy and a hope that hopefully goes deeper than just hanging out and playing games with them for a week whatever we can do there i think is is so worth it given the situation that they're in right now yeah, well, all of us here at Locked On certainly are rooting for you and your team as you go over to Ukraine. All of Baylor is too, and I think that the university should certainly make note that a student is going to Ukraine to volunteer their time and services um, and raising money to do so and and bring faith, hope, the things that you mentioned to Ukraine, a war-torn city. So I really hope that, that Baylor, I don't want to say capitalizes, but at the same time, they should promote the fact that you are that you are representing Baylor in Ukraine uh, so I, I wanted to give a plug to that before we get get into this. Uh, you know, no good segue. Truly not. Uh, you talk about hope, and this is a much different kind of hope for Baylor football in 2023, one that can be much less strong than that for a war-torn nation. Uh, but looking at the top talent on this offense, I, I'm jumping in with number five. Jackson, who is the fifth best Baylor football player on the offense in 2023? Number five, I think, is the toughest spot here because you've got a clear top three in some order. I think number four is potentially pretty locked in. Number five, I don't have a clear top three. I don't. Mm. Okay, well, well, we'll get there in a minute then. But, uh, yeah, looking, I think the, the big choices that you have here for number five, at least from my perspective, Hal Presley, I think you have as your likely Z receiver, potentially X, but I'm, I'm thinking Z. Um is one of the options there. You also have Josh Cameron. If you're really banking on a Josh Cameron breakout season, I'm going to go with Keytron Jackson, 
the Arkansas transfer. Yeah. Uh, former blue chip recruit out of Royce City, which is just northeast of Dallas, had the Alabama offer, yeah. had the Ohio State offer, had the UT and AM offers. Uh, really brings a different sort of size and athleticism to this Baylor offense that doesn't exist elsewhere. And Look, he he was not very highly used at his last location, right? Ar- he was not the number one guy at Arkansas. KJ Jefferson, I mean, he, he only had a couple of catches. But if he really breaks out and he does what he's physically capable of doing, what his pedigree says he's capable of doing, he can unlock a really brand new aspect to this offense that wasn't there at all last year and I think could really make Blake Shapin's life a lot easier this fall. My number five, I'm also going in the receiver category here. But the guy that I think, and Keytron's up there. He's an honorable mention receiving votes on my list. The guy that I think breaks out instead of Keytron, I have these, these flipped, Monterey Baldwin. Monterey, 33 receptions last season, 565 yards and four touchdowns. Didn't jump off the page necessarily in year two at Baylor, but was supposed to preseason. We thought, okay, who's the one guy after a Sugar Bowl performance that could be it on the Baylor offense, could step up and be the next Tyquan Thornton, Denzel Mims. A lot of people pointed at Monterey Baldwin, myself included. Not to say he had a disappointing year. He just had the year that a typical sophomore does in the Power Five. And I think this next season, what breaks him out is the fact that he was used more than Keytron was at Arkansas and that he's been at Baylor. He's been in the offense. He's been with Blake Shapin. The rapport is there. Monterey Baldwin lands at my five spot. Uh, and and I, I want to say the receiving votes, guys, here's why I have a lot of confidence in Baylor's offense next season. Drake Dabney, spoiler alert, doesn't make my list. I think he could be really good. Kelsey Johnson, same thing. I think he could come out and be really good. I think Jordan Neighbors could have a breakout season. Look at Jack Roberts, the transfer who's coming in. There are guys, Armani Winfield. What does Armani Winfield do next season? He was supposed to be another one of those guys last year. Hal Presley. There are there are some dudes on this offense. I think it's going to be really good. Good problem to have. Quaylen Jones. I just, I, I five spot for me, Monterey Baldwin. Yeah, I think that's the real crux of the issue for the Baylor offense is you probably can go eight to ten guys deep who can legitimately play a role. But do you have the guys who step up and become stars like Richard Reese certainly was on that path, maybe got there this past season. But do you have, say, a Keytron Jackson or a Monterey Baldwin or somebody like that who can take that next step? That's where you go from Baylor's probably a middle to back half of the pack big 12 offense this coming season to oh this this team's legitimately competing for a conference championship but you really need two to three of those breakout guys i i think you could get there but it, it's going to depend on the way grimes sets up this offense for his receiving core i think getting into number four i'll go first with this one and speaking of richard reese this is locked on baylor part of the locked on podcast network it's your team every day Before I jump into number four, I got to tell you guys about oh LinkedIn. Dude, I, I've been trying to hire an intern here recently because I, I bought a company for a good little fee, a little startup, which is pretty neat, right? And I, I've just, I'm accepting a new job here pretty soon, which I'm going to tell you what it is. I can't tell you yet, but I'm going to tell you what it is. And I need somebody to help me out. I need an intern. I need somebody to do my the dirty work, right? Well, it was easy. All I had to do is go to the purple hashtag hiring frame at LinkedIn to let people know that I am hiring. There were simple tools. Screening questions made it easy to focus on a candidate pool. The first person who applied actually sent me a cover letter that was addressed to another person in a different state. It wasn't addressed to me. Um, tough first mistake to have. But LinkedIn hiring solutions and their talent frame cannot help me with that. They they can help candidates find the right fit. They can help people who want New candidates help you get the right fit as well. All of that is finding the right team member at LinkedIn. It's the number one, number one place in delivering high quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post a job for free. That's what I did at LinkedIn.com forward slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com forward slash locked on college to post your job for free. Keep in mind with that terms and conditions, they do apply. All right, Jackson, number four on my list, Dick Reese. Richard Reese, 
comes in at number four for me. If you watch the show recently where I said top five Baylor football players on the team overall, you'll notice that I did not include Richard Reese, but he makes my list here. Sophomore from Belleville, five foot nine, 175 pounds, almost a thousand yards rushing his freshman season, 14 touchdowns, 200 carries, five yards per carry. The dude was the bell cow. And that's why he's not in my top three. He's going to get less carries this year. This is an apology year to Richard Reese. We're going to use you, but now we have enough in this room, enough stability in this room. We don't have to rely on Richard Reese to have 200 carries and give him the ball 30 times in a game, which you shouldn't do to a freshman ball carrier. He's great. He's great. But they're going to lean on more options around him so he doesn't break my top three. But is it based on... Are we really trying to find the best player here or the most production, right? Because you, I mean. What's, what now? What's your difference? Now we're getting into the semantics of it all. Well, you're, you know, big, big Cowboys writer right here, right? Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard were splitting reps a couple years ago in a way that was not conducive to the way that their talent level shook up, right? Yeah. Like there was a point in time where Tony Pollard was back number two, but was pretty clearly better than Zeke at that point. Mm-hmm. I think we could, even if Reese is getting fewer carries, if he's the best back in the backfield even if you're using him as a change pace guy because of build or whatever else i think you can still put him in the top three and oh, you can i have you a little can. bit higher and you will i know you will but here's the thing with this i i agree right the tony pollard and zeke deal maybe reese ends up being the better player with less production but i think the player that gets that gets more carries that is asked to do more is going to be the better back for baylor which i will get into after you give your number four uh yeah my number four will be could be a complete flop because th- there's like a five percent chance this guy doesn't even start uh, i'm gonna go with jake roberts from north texas yeah uh, okay I, yeah last season uh ben sims played a really key role in simplifying the way that blake shapen was able to read the field and consistently being a big bodied threat close to the line of scrimmage six four guy steady hands jake roberts brings the size but he also brings a more explosive vertical element that Ben Sims, it just wasn't really his game. Jake yeah. Roberts has the ability to stretch the field vertically, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get to the end of the season. He has six, seven touchdowns, and you're looking at him every time down the field getting maybe even double teamed in the red zone uh, just because he's that type of threat vertically. And so, look, Drake Dabney might break out and be the star guy, and we never really hear from Jake Roberts. Um, but, yeah, don't, don't be surprised if you hear the uh, – in-game PA announcer screaming his name a couple times this season. Yeah, Jake Roberts, North, Tex- North Texas product to me, one of the top three transfers when it comes to who will get production next season, whose name will you hear a lot. You think Barrington's? They might be the best, but how how often are you going to hear that name? I, Jake Roberts will be a guy who surprises a lot of people on the offense. Jackson, you're number three. My number three is going to be a guy who might be your number one. It's uh, Dominic Richardson, transfer running back out of Oklahoma State. I, I see Dominic Richardson being one of the most important pieces on this offense mm. in 2023. Could you mean this man, a grown person? Hey, I know a that guy. grown a man? That guy is going to run over some people. Like, yes. we're we're going to get to the... Texas Tech game, the BYU game, and there are going to be some people just lying on the floor questioning. There is no BYU game, but that's okay. That is okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. UCF game. Yeah. UCF is going to be questioning a lot of things, potentially. Uh, now, watch out. Their fans will fill up your Twitter feed. With with GIFs yes. and not really anything else. But, GIFs, by the way. Mm, guy who made it said GIF. So, jeez. Oh, I mean, Oop. it's probably wrong. Anyway. Uh, my, my life philosophy is I pronounce words, whatever is the most fun to say. And so Jackie toll, we're locking in. So, yeah, I, I think, I really do think Dominic Richardson will play a key role on this offense. If Jeff Grimes leans more into a, I mean, obviously big downhill running team, you have the wide zone. That's like the whole thing, right? Um, if he leans more into a pound the rock play after play after play um this is going to be like 70 30 more than 60 40 i think dominic richardson has the potential to challenge for uh all big 12 honors i don't think he's the best running back on the team we'll get to that in a minute uh but he i in a similar way to 
uh, Keytron Jackson, I think potentially can unlock a completely different aspect of this offense by bringing the type of power game that wasn't really present last season. Quaylen Jones had it, and that was important. But I think Dominic Richardson brings more speed and uh, just is generally a little bit more dynamic for what this offense wants to run. Yeah. Uh, Richardson, I like, and I will explain more in a little bit. My number three best offensive player for the Baylor Bears, Blake's a million shaping, baby. Take it to the bank. Look, I've said it. I have said it. Max Duggan was bad. He was real, real bad for a long time, too. They gave him a long leash. And it was only because of an injury to Chandler Morris did Max Duggan see the field in his Heisman finalist season. Do I think Blake Shapin will be Max Duggan? No. But I think he takes a big step. And he is a top three production player on the Baylor offense. Cam Stewart, the conductor of the Blake Shapin train. 100%. I'm riding it. I'm on the first car, not the caboose. Jeff Grimes, going to design an offense that is conducive with Blake Shapin, especially in year two. Can he create the next Zach Wilson? Possibly. Point again, Blake Shapin, the number three quarterback in the Big 12 last year, according to PFF, who is always right. Always right. Ahead they, they, of guys. You know they watch every play? The, every single play. And every, he was ahead of guys like Jalen yeah. Daniels, Will Howard, and JT Daniels, and Quinn Ewers, who was really bad, and, and Spencer Sanders, who was bad. The only players ahead of Blake Shapin, Dylan Gabriel, and Max Duggan, one of which was a Heisman finalist. I think Blake Shapin's going to be good. Damn good. He's going to be a good offensive player. He's going to help Baylor. Baylor's going to win 10 games. Blake Shapin has to be a really good quarterback. If Baylor goes 5-7. and seven, Blake Shapin was a very bad quarterback. And this guy would then take over my top five most valuable Baylor offensive players, that being the transfer Sawyer Robertson. But I like Blake being in my top five, though I feel like he won't be in yours. Yeah, I, I feel like philosophically I sort of moved away from having a quarterback there, especially since uh, it did seem like for a little while there the position was in flux and we're, you know, sort of looking more at weapons. I would put him above Keytron Jackson and above Jake Roberts. After that, I think just the way this offense runs, I wouldn't put him in my top three. I don't think that the way that he contributes is necessary to this team moving the ball in the way that Jeff Grimes wants to. Because you can use that wide zone running game with really anybody functional under center, right? Blake yeah. Shaban's going to be the icing on top more than the icing on top. Um, he's going to be the ice cream on top of the BJ's Pazuki, you know, if, if he does what I think he is capable of doing. That being said... Okay, who's who's the best player? He just he hasn't broken through that wall for me yet to be able to say, okay, this guy is going to be better than Richard. Oh, Reese or but Keytron Jackson's broken through that wall for you. Eh, that's a philosophical difference. I I do think Blake Shape and has hmm. proven so far to be better. Um, and I I will hammer this point till the cows come home. Before that, like that West Virginia game was Blake Shapin's magnum opus, and after that head injury that he got everything completely changed i don't know if it was mental i don't know if it was physical well i get mental because concussion but you know what i mean uh whatever it was his production radically changed at that point in the season and if he goes back to pre-injury blake shapen that's an easily top half of the big 12 quarterback um i i just don't think we saw enough in the spring game to be able to confidently say that and i hope that we'll see enough in against utah and against uh, you know, perennial powerhouse, Long Island to be able to say, yeah, this is the guy. Uh, but for now, I, I think we can, I'll, I'll just philosophically zone in on the weapons for this one. Let's round it up. Top two offensive players for Baylor football in 2023. This is locked on Baylor, part of the locked on podcast network. That is your team every day. All right, Jackson, number two for me. I'm going to go with who is probably number, should be number one, but I'm going to put him number two. Out of Spokane, Washington, from BYU, the best offensive lineman in the Big 12, Clark Barrington. Played in 46 games for BYU over the course of three seasons. Four seasons. Started 37 consecutive games. Started all 13 games in 2022 and was a second team all independent from Phil Steele. He has been listed as All-Americans. He As an All-American, he is an Outland Trophy contender preseason watch lister. Rotary Lombardi Award, Senior Bowl watch list. He is the best player 
on the Baylor offense. However, you won't hear his name a lot. When you think about production, you're not going to think about Barrington. You're not going to think about the offensive line. I want a flashy number one. You know me, I like the flash, but I put Barrington, my number two player on the Baylor offense. He is going to be the anchor of the offensive line and be the best offensive lineman in this conference. If, if Baylor succeeds, the primary reason will be because Clark and Campbell Barrington anchored the best offensive line in the Big 12. And I think that is basically a foregone conclusion at that point. Maybe I'm being a little bit overconfident there. Uh, one of us has to be positive. But this is what Jeff Grimes does, is he finds people, in this case, finds all-American caliber players to step in and just maul people. And he gets dynamic running backs, like we'll talk about in a moment, uh, to lead that charge. But ultimately, the way that he runs the offense, I think, is really conducive to Clark and Campbell Barrington really showing out with their uh, ability to pull. They're going to be dudes. Baylor's offensive line is going to be good because of the last name Barrington. They will dominate this upcoming season. And I, again, Clark is going to be a huge catalyst of why the offensive line will flip from what it was last season, which was just okay at best most most of the time. Uh, Jackson, who's your number two? Yeah, I'm, again, just rolling with weapons. So uh, Clark would be my number one player on the offense if I was including offensive linemen. Um, my number two, I wrestled with one and two more than I would like to admit. Uh, my number two is going to be Monterey Baldwin. Uh, ah. I think, yeah, what I was watching some clips the other day from uh, 2011, Baylor versus Oklahoma. I don't, I don't know yeah. if you remember that game. Uh, pretty fantastic showing. And just watching the dynamic athleticism of players like a uh, Kendall Wright, right? Like a Terrence yeah. Williams. And seeing the way that they totally reshaped the dimensions of the field with their speed. I'm not saying Monterey Baldwin is Kendall Wright, but he has game-breaking speed. And yeah. whatever this offense looks like, you better be getting him at least 15, 10 to 15 touches a game. He's one. He's only weighs, you know, sports reference, 5'9", 165, you don't want to put him in the middle of the field a whole lot, but playing that true slot receiver role, maybe getting in the backfield a couple of times and sort of like a uh, Darren Sproles type vibe. Yeah. He is the most dynamic player on the offense, uh, probably on the entire team. And the more you get the ball in his hands, the better. I like Monterey in my top five. Should be in everybody's top five. Breakout year on its way. And I do believe he's above Keytron Jackson on your list. Uh, Jackson, your your number one Baylor football offensive player in 2023. Shock the nation by leaving Richard Reese off altogether. Yeah, my uh, my number one player is going to be Drake Dabney. I think, you know, just dominant. Uh, yeah, no. Richard Drake Reese. Drake Dabney. Yeah. You know, mediocre first name, but the rest of it's pretty good. So, yeah, Richard Reese, I think, just stands as this is the guy who proved to be the future last season. Um, elusive. He has burst uh, pretty good contact balance, particularly for his size. Um, and he's proven that he can take the bulk of the reps. He's not going to be the only guy in the backfield. That, not that he was last year, but he's not going to be the only guy in the backfield this season. Going to be splitting reps with Dominic Richardson. But if you're looking at one guy on this Baylor team to say, oh, he's going to break out and become all conference first team. He's going to break out and contend for an all-american status i don't know if he quite gets there as a sophomore but richard reese i think has to be the name on your list as the number one breakout candidate as the guy who changes the face of the offense as the guy who is the face of the team heading into the season if, if the he was a quarterback he would be the face of the team um and i i think he should be anyway number one Dominic Richardson, for every reason that you just named. However, I think Dominic Richardson becomes that guy. He becomes the A1, the bell cow. He's the first one that trots out there with the offense in at least game three of the season, especially when conference play begins. He's the guy that gets the football. He has played now three years of college football, gotten 40 or more carries in each of those years, 150 of them last year, eight touchdowns, 543 yards. He doesn't have as explosive numbers as Richard Reese, of course, but, but he's the guy. He's your, he, he's your every down back because uh, he's got enough power to be a great 
third down ball carrier. And he's got enough speed and elusiveness to be a great first down ball carrier. He is going to make a big impact for Baylor. I think be the surprise guy who is all big 12 and a possible all American Baylor's going to run the ball a whole lot. And I think they're going to run it more with Dominic Richardson because of his age and experience. And he's shown he's perfectly capable. They're going to run it more with him than they do Richard Reese. Reese is, again, it's not going to be an off year, but it's a bit of a, whew, we gave you a huge workload last season. We got this other really good back who came into the transfer portal. We're going to use the heck out of him. I think the big thing to remember, too, with Dominic Richardson, 22 catches last year for 220 yards. And uh, you're speaking my language. We saw last season a lot of short passes around the line of scrimmage, trying to get guys out into space, right? You pack everybody in with the running game, and then you throw a quick screen, or you want to play action bootleg, throw it back the other way. Dominic Richardson fits in pretty well with that. Yeah. And he, he, I do think, will receive at least half the carries um, on this team. I think Richard Reese, might, probably a little bit better, uh, but I am no real qualms with Dominic Richardson being number one. Yep. Well, Jackson, my five, number five was Monterey Baldwin. Then four was Richard Reese, three Blake Shapin, two Clark Barrington, one Dominic Richardson. Your five. Uh, my number five was Keytron Jackson, four Jake Roberts, three Dominic Richardson, two Monterey Baldwin, and one Drake Dabney. Also, yeah, we're Richard thinking Reese. the same. One in the same, basically. We're thinking a lot of the same guys, a lot in the same time, a lot in the top five. And it just shows there are some dudes that you can expect to perform for Baylor football in 2023, especially if this team's going to win. That's Jackson Posey. Follow him at by Jackson Posey. Keep up with him in Ukraine, which is wild. Uh, I am cold and in Alaska. This has been Locked on Baylor. Thanks for making it your first lesson every single day. Come back on Friday. We're going to talk about the top five defensive players, probably, unless UConn joins the Big 12. Maybe they already, maybe they already have. Unlocked on Baylor.